The film 2001 A Space Odyssey is a masterpiece. Not only is it an integral part of cinematic history due to its groundbreaking special effects and cinematography, but its symbolism has been the subject of debate for over half a century. However, one aspect of the film that has also sparked the interest of some dedicated viewers is its alternate history. Hey guys, Mind of Lewis here. In this collaboration, we will explore how certain events in our history could have been tweaked to produce the future, or more accurately, past of 2001's world. We won't simply list a dedicated timeline of events explaining the linear progression towards a society like that of 2001's, but rather we will discuss the alternate policy decisions and technological paths required for a version of Earth with more advanced spaceflight. Although the point of divergence from the timeline of Earth begins around 3.5 to 3.6 million years ago, with the introduction of alien technology to the Australopithecus, the divergence in our record history begins during the mid 20th century. Although it's tempting to suggest that our history diverges from that of 2001 A Space Odyssey sometime after 1968, the film's year of release, in reality it's more likely that these two timelines diverge even earlier. This is because the funding necessary for such massive space programs would merely be a pipe dream in a post-Vietnam, post-Great Society economy. This is because the ensuing stagflation would force governments to sharply decrease public spending, a paradigm directly counter to what is necessary for a 2001-style society. However, in the video we won't get into the specifics of who wins certain elections in certain years. What we do know for a fact is that at some point American astronauts reached the moon, be it in 1969 or another year, and from there expand their presence among the stars. In such a scenario, it's likely that a 1967 Outer Space Treaty and related agreements are never ratified or otherwise superseded. This would open the door for space racing powers such as the US and USSR to launch orbital nuclear weapon platforms and propel forward advanced nuclear propulsion technologies. In order for a space station, such as the one featured in 2001, to be constructed, it would require the commitment of billions of dollars towards the engineering and design efforts. This is money that otherwise might have been spent on the Vietnam War or Great Society programs, both of which would need to be severely reduced or cut completely to fund space exploration. The rapid growing military presence in space would prompt other nuclear states such as China, the UK, to join the space race. According to the field's novelization, the first manned lunar outpost was dedicated in 1994, following the commencement of a secret government project to investigate extraterrestrial phenomena. By the late 1990s, NASA would be equipped with spacecraft capable to sustain flights to Jupiter, 365 million miles away. Despite the distance, this would not be far-fetched, as ion propulsion technology already existed in our timeline during this decade. Thanks to public investment in microchip miniaturization, computer technology of this alternate 1990s is also able to yield advanced artificial intelligence in the form of HAL 9000. In our timeline, such technology capable of managing a spacecraft's computer systems is in our near future, possibly under two decades away, meaning that Moore's Law is probably twice as fast in the 2001 timeline. The funding required to sustain a massive space infrastructure could run up the bill for over $40 billion a year, more than twice the agency's current budget. In exchange for cutting spending on other public services, the next technological benefits that might be gained would offset potential drawbacks in areas such as medicine. To be sure, while many of the benefits from this advancement would trickle down into the civilian sectors, much of the financial gains would make their way into the pockets of rich investors and military contractors, creating a wealth and power imbalance not too different from our world. Indeed, the world would be far from a utopia. The Cold War would still wage on nuclear power nations in a constant state of surveillance, shadow warfare, and cultural tension. Even the Berlin Wall would still exist, According to the novel, one observation made by the film's viewers is that Hal seems to be more of a personality than the actual human astronauts, an indication that humans are becoming more isolated over the past few decades due to advances in technology. All this sounds like a perfect storm for a World War III scenario, and in fact, the film's novelization suggests that the Star Child is sent by the aliens to ignite a nuclear war, which is why, for all our world's faults and shortcomings, at least we're safer than we were just a few decades ago. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and share it. And don't forget to check out my channel, Mind of Lewis, link in the description below. If you want to support me on Patreon, click the element on the end screen. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to be awesome. 